us. I'm moderating this incredible chat that we're about to have. Next up, we have um, an extraordinary young man with a great story who is doing some incredible stuff for the community now. Let's give it up for Grammy-nominated recording artist, The Baby! There you go. Make some noise for the 704 in here. The Baby in here. Yes. And last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Elliot Connie. He is a licensed psychotherapist. Give it up for Elliot. All right, all right. Y'all ready? What's up? So my first question is going to be you, uh, for you, the baby. Um, yes, ma'am. Again, thank you for joining us. I appreciate here. you having. Thank you for being here, honor. my brother. Yeah, Beautiful space you. to be in. I appreciate y'all welcoming me with open arms. I appreciate all y'all for being here today too. That's right. So can you share with us what inspired you to start this mental health nonprofit in honor of your loved one, and what specific challenges you aim to address within the black community regarding mental health and suicide? First and foremost, what inspired me to, to embark on my mental health journey and just creating this initiative in honor of my brother is this being something that I need first and foremost, you know what I mean? And not just me bringing other people and challenging them to you know, embark on a mental health journey, but this is something I need, something my brother's kids need, my nieces, my nephew. My brother left four kids behind when he took his life um, you know, to suicide back in 2020. So these resources that I'm creating and these tools that I'm, you know, putting in front of people, these are tools that I'm using in real time. I'm not just telling somebody else to go do it. Like even me being in this room and getting in front of people like this and getting on panels like this, every conversation I have, it, you know, it, it takes me a step along, along the way in the journey of healing myself. So I feel like it's super important, not just for me, but everybody else and just to, to feel the healing in real time and, to, you know, see how good it feels. It's something that I'm super excited to just give somebody else the opportunity to do as well. That's awesome. May, may I ask you what your brother's name was? Is Glenn Johnson. Glenn? Glenn Johnson. Glenn. Yes, ma'am. Glenn. Yes, ma'am. So I honor your brother's name. Let's all honor his brother right now. I appreciate that. And his memory. That is so important. So mental health and suicide are often considered taboo subjects in the black community. You know, I certainly know from firsthand experience, my father died by suicide, my best friend in 2014, and I came really close to taking my own life in 2015. So I want to ask you, um, Connie and, um, I'm sorry, Elliot, Connie and uh, Charlemagne, what are some of the key barriers you have identified that prevent open discussions and access to mental health resources in our community? I'll start with you, Charlemagne, and all that you're doing with the Mental Wealth Alliance. What, what was it? What was the question again? What are some of the key barriers that you've seen that prevent open discussions around suicide in our community? <sighs> Man, people don't want to be perceived as crazy. Um, that's why I always say in order to eradicate the stigma around mental health, people cannot be afraid to tell their story. And I think a lot of times, you know, uh, the black in the black community, we don't do ourselves no favors by keeping secrets. You know, I I've been dealing with anxiety and, you know, bouts of depression my whole life, but it wasn't until I started, you know, having these conversations about it and telling my own story that I realized there were so many people that was dealing with the same thing, in particular, my father. Right, and I tell this story all the time, but it was 2018, I'm home in Mount's Corner, South Carolina, it was the week of Thanksgiving. My cousin, uh, who was 25 at the time, he had just completed suicide. I got that term from Shanti, by the way, completed suicide. He had just completed suicide at 25 years old, and he used to do like a lot of work with my father in the neighborhood, because my father's in the construction. And my father called me, and he had just read my second book, Shook One Anxiety, Playing Tricks on Me, and my cousin completed suicide. And that was the first time my father revealed to me that he had been going to therapy two and three times a week and that he tried to commit suicide, you know, 30 plus years ago, you know, that he had been on 10 to 12 different medications in South Carolina for his, for his mental health. And so I remember asking my mom, I said to my mom, I said, Joe, you know Pops was dealing with all this? And she said, I thought he was playing crazy to get a check. Mm. So it's like, those are the type of things that people be wanting to have conversations about, but they just don't because they think people are gonna think you're just playing crazy to get a check. So we just all gotta, you know, tell our stories. Yeah, absolutely. You got to be more open and vulnerable. Elliot, would you like to add to that? I mean, what else do you think we can do more to open up discussions and access to mental health resources in our community? I think, um, I mean, I agree with everything Charlemagne said. I think another barrier to mental health issues is pride. And I think we're proud of the wrong things. And sometimes pride makes us uh, afraid of judgment. But the truth is, we need to learn how to be proud of the whole journey and the whole story. Yeah. 
Like someone like Charlemagne the God, he's an incredible person that's accomplished incredible things. But when you learn that he struggled with anxiety and depression, that provides context to his accomplishments. So we need to learn to be proud of the entire picture instead of just being proud of the positive picture. And when we can do that, then we have the opportunity for true healing. So to answer that question, like how do we open up more dialogue and more access to mental health? We have to be learn to be proud of our entire selves. And when we can do that, then that opens up everything and you have the possibility to heal from anything. Yeah, give it up for that. I remember when my dad died by suicide, when we were a baby, we tried everything, we said everything rather that he died from other than suicide because we didn't want to tell the whole story to your point. And so only until I was an adult <clears throat> was I able to say what had happened and be okay with it and not be ashamed and embarrassed. And so I want to go back to you, the baby. You know, the Mental Wealth Alliance and Charlemagne and Dr. Alfie aim to shed light on all these critical issues. Are there anything else you want to, is there anything else rather you want to tell us about some of the initiatives and programs that you're going to be doing with the baby care or the baby cares to break stigma and provide support to those in need? Yes, ma'am. So we just launched the baby cares about two days ago. I went to speak at West Charlotte High School, a high school in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're partnering with uh, Mental Health America. We, we okay. actually brought the, the, a chapter of it to the Carolinas. So that's something I'm extremely proud of and, you know, just having an opportunity to do. But with that, um, we launched the Glenn Johnson for Mental Health Initiative. And with that, we'll just be providing resources and tools necessary. And they look, and real t we're creating programs, you know, right now as we speak. And like I said, this is a journey that I'm just now embarking on. And I'm just super excited to be learning as I go. And as I learn, teach, you know what I mean? And just pass the information right along. Yes, I love that. And I run a mental health organization, Silence of Shame, so we're definitely going to be in touch and hopefully partner Absolutely. with you all. Um, I want to go um, back to you, uh, Elliot. You know, I've seen the suicide rate, or we've seen rather, suicide rates, especially for, for black men, from 2018 to 2021 increased y'all by 30%. That's alarming, and that's a problem. What would you say, particularly just to the black community, especially our black men in the audience today, what do we need to do truly to be able to open up? I know suicidal ideation, sometimes it could be, you know, hereditary, depression could run in your family, but sometimes it's situational. So give me a good message for our black men today. Um, so the first part of your question is, what can we do? Go to therapy, mm. period. The second part of your question, like what's a message we can give to them? Seriously, do not forget what I'm about to say. You are only as sick as your secrets. Ooh. So y'all write that down. <clears throat> you're only as sick as your secrets. So whatever it is that is tormenting you, you got to share that. You got to let that out. And when you let it out, two incredible things happen. And for real, y'all don't forget this. The first thing that happens is you release it. You're no longer bound by it. The second thing that happens, and Charlemagne just spoke to it, when you speak to it, someone's going to say, me too. And you no longer feel like you're alone in that journey. And I've been a practicing psychotherapist for almost 20 years. I've never seen a single client that was struggling with suicidal ideation or depression that did not feel alone. So once we release that stuff and we share it, we no longer fear we no longer feel alone, our resilience goes up when we get partnered. Our resilience goes up when someone's walking the journey with us. So go to therapy and never forget you are only as sick as your secrets. So anything you stop keeping secret will no longer keep you sick. Woo! Thank you, Elliot. And I tell people, you know, we got a superstar rapper on the, the panel today. You got to rap through your problems. What does that mean? The R is recognizing those unfamiliar thoughts and feelings. The A in rap is acknowledging it and then accepting it. Because a lot of times we do stuff, but we act like it didn't happen. So you recognize it, you acknowledge it, and you accept it. And then you, what's the P? You process through those challenges and problems with a professional like Elliot. So recognize, acknowledge, accept, and process. All right, my, uh, well, we got about six minutes left. So I do want to ask the baby, what message would you like to convey to those struggling in silence? And even some of your brethren in the entertainment industry, like. I would, I would go back to a couple of things he just spoke on, just going to therapy. And with, you, with the acronym that you just broke down, like the order that you put it in, recognizing and accepting, and then uh, the, the third one being processing, like that's where I'm at. Like to this, it, it started with me. It took me so long to just recognize it and accept it. You know what I mean? I probably recognized it early on, but accepting it, 
that's something, that's the stage I just got to, you know what I mean, and processing it. And, you know, now I'm in the room with professionals, with several professionals. I've learned a lot of information just being on this stage with these great people for the, the 10 minutes we've been up here, you know what I mean? So things that I would encourage other artists to do is to just, you know, speak up, you know, seek help, have the conversations with people that make you uncomfortable, you know what I mean? And just like you say, you know, you, you're only as sick as your secrets. Like a lot of the things that I go through, I've just been conditioned just as a black man, period. And I'm sure plenty of people out here, like, you know, as black men and women, let's not just act like, you know what I mean? Black men are, are up against the That's eyes right. or, you know what I mean? Go through things, but we're conditioned to just sweep things under the rug and, you know what I mean? And just navigate through them however we can. And it's almost like, you know, we live every day, day in and day out, like, in survival mode, you know, and that's something that's, that's not healthy, but you know, we're, we're strong enough to survive. So with the strength that we'll have, if, if we're having these conversations and speaking with professionals and sitting down and going to therapy, you know, I, I would encourage other artists to do that and, you know, just take the first step, you know what I mean? The first step in the right direction. And, and I'm, I'm on like my third or fourth step and it already, you know, it just feels amazing. Feels amazing. Wow. And I just, I just want to give you your flowers because the entertainment industry can be tough Social media can be tough. Everybody got a, opinions, and and I just met you. I don't know you. All I know is the accolades you've received, and you know, different things you've done in your past. But you know, loving yourself, being able to process through your brother's suicide. Nobody knows what that journey has been like for you. Mm -hmm. And so for you to be doing what you're doing now, not only are you helping yourself and your family, you're helping so many other people out here. We talked about it earlier on the panel. A lot of times people are going through stuff, they project it on others. Yes, ma'am. So I just want you, young man, I'm just say to you, keep doing what you're doing. I Focus will. on you and your family and all that the baby cares is gonna do for our community. Absolutely. That's all that matters. Absolutely. So let's give him his flowers, y'all, for what he's doing thank you, with thank this you. important initiative to save lives. Can I can I expound please, on something? Please, please. Can I I want to ask Elliot, because Elliot said, you know, you're only as sick as your secrets, which I agree with. But what about when you know you have to live certain traumas out loud? Like, yes. you know, you, you, when, when, when things happen where a family member commits the suicide and that is a traumatic experience, but then you still have obligations, right. right? You still, That's and right. they, say, they say staying busy is a response to trauma. What advice would you, you give to people who have to, have to deal with their traumas out loud in the public? To be fully, fully transparent. He was using words like acceptance, but I wanna, I wanna add a word to that. And Talk we have to, to practice radical acceptance. What I mean by that is like, when you go through something, you gotta deal with it publicly. That's just where you are at that moment. You have to literally just accept, like this is where I am in that moment and process through it however you need to process through it. When you bury it and keep it a secret because I have a public job or because people see me or because I'm in public, you're just gonna make yourself sicker. Yeah. Like you really have to just accept. And here's, here's the thing, like we are conditioned, like as, as a black culture, we're conditioned to think if you knew my pain, you would perceive me as weak. So thus I have to hide that pain so you perceive me as strong. But I'm telling y'all, the strongest thing you could ever do is be you, period. So if on that day, me is processing a trauma, then damn it, you're gonna have to just see me processing a trauma. Yes. Right. That's just how it works. So it's unfortunate sometimes that we have to process these things in public. And it's unfortunate that social media does what it does. But I don't give a damn, this is me. And on this day, this is how I have to show up. And when you can show up as you every single day, that is true strength. Yes. Thank you for adding that question. That was a great question. You, you can turn on IG on any given moment and see me in an ugly cry. <laughs> I don't care. You're going to get who I am in that moment. Thank you, Elliot, for that. Charlemagne, what message of hope would you like to leave everyone who's struggling in silence? Man, the, uh, the message of hope is that you're not alone, and um, you don't realize that until you start sharing your story, like I said earlier, until you start realizing that you know you're only as sick as your secrets, like Elliot Connie said. That's why it's so important for us to have spaces like this, man. This is community, Absolutely. right? And I, I, I thought it was unique the stuff that I was dealing with. That's why I would keep it to myself. But then when I started sharing it and realizing like, no, there's other people out there dealing with anxiety. There's other people out there dealing with depression. There's other people out there dealing with PTSD. There's out there people out there dealing with things that, you know, I couldn't even comprehend. Like when you just start sharing that story, man, you just form this, this village. And I, we got to get back to that. We got to get back to being a village. We got to get back to, you know, lifting each other up. You know, I love that. Uh, I love that meme of that basketball player when he had his head down and the brother just came and helped him lift it up. 
up, like little simple things like that. So the, the hope is that you're not alone. So just share your story and you'll realize you're not alone. Yes, thank you. I want to give our final words to the baby. Anything else you'd like to share? I mean, all the, all the things up? that, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you up. I'm just, I'm, I'm excited, you know what I'm saying right now? I'm just excited because all the information that, that these three great people on the stage are sharing, this is, this is my life in real time, you know what I mean? Like, this is really my life in real time. About a week ago, I felt completely alone in my struggles and what I've been through. When I go sit down with him at Breakfast Club last week, when I come sit down right here, I met about a dozen people backstage before coming out here, as well as the, what, this is about 2,000 people in here, close to 2,000 people in here, like, you know, to see everybody in here have similar interests and, you know, be seeking this information and have this information impact everybody out here and, you know, get you guys to just nod your head and agree. I'm up here beside these guys, like, like I feel like he's talking to me. Everything he say, I feel like he's talking to me. Everything they've said up here, I feel like they're talking directly to me. So I'm just super excited to just embark on this journey and uh, start therapy myself and I have, you know, as many conversations as I can. Like, I'm actually upset that I didn't bring my nieces, my brother's kids with me, my mom with me. So, you know, like, I'm just excited to just, you know, to leave here today and just to go tell everybody, you know, all the great information that I gained here today and to just bring my family along with me and others that I need along with me on this journey of healing. I love that. Yes, give it up. So we're out of time now, but we got three strong black men and I just want to say to each one of you, black man, I'm always coining acronyms, man, manifesting a need, manifesting a need to be vulnerable, to be transparent, to be okay with who you are, being, taking care of yourself and knowing that self-care is not selfish, right? And pouring back into your community. Y'all give it up for these black men who are helping to erase stigma and shame around suicide in the black community. Thank y'all so much and let's give it up for them. Thank you.